recording part. And then I will share my screen. And then I will start presenting. Okay, so this is uh, basically a, a refresher course for some of you and, and and I'm hoping to convince the rest of you that it's easy enough that this is something you should be doing. Uh, basically, for FM radios, uh, there are two general types of frequencies, and this is just going to be a quick recap. Uh, simplex frequencies, these are, are ones that are really easy to program because there's, there are no tones, there's no offsets, there's no anything. Uh, ju you just type in the frequency. Uh, you can actually do it just using the, the VFO mode on your, uh, on your radio if you want. Uh, for repeaters, it's a bit more complicated since we've got both the transmit and receive frequency to deal with. And those frequencies differ depending on which band you're on and also whether or not the offset is a plus offset or a minus offset. And we'll, we'll see that as we go along. And then there's also the issue of, of tones, which can help avoid, uh, avoid interference on the repeater. Uh, here's what's on a, the club website listing sort of area repeaters. This is just the top of the list, obviously. Uh, let's take a look at, at, at what this specification means. So we'll focus on the one for Martha Jefferson. And what we have there is 146.925. That's going to be our receive frequency. That's going to be the frequency that sound comes in on. Then we've also got this little minus here. And that says that it's an offset, that the offset direction is a minus. Now, since we are on two meters, the offset size is going to be uh, six tenths of a megahertz or 600 kilohertz. So our transmit frequency is then going to be 146.325. It's our receive frequency minus. If it had been a, a plus offset, then we'd be adding 0.6 there. And then it's also specifying that we have a tone of 151.4. And then it's also specified that it's a, a, a fusion repeater, um, which uh, does not really affect the way we, we do our programming. That's all handled in the repeater. But the important part is we've got the offset. And that offset, again, is band specific. Uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be five megahertz for UHF, and it's going, if you're doing 1.25 meters, 220 megahertz, it's going to be 1.6 megahertz different. Now, you can do this all manually. The clear instructions are written over there on the right. <laughs> uh, I, I don't really recommend it. I have done it. I actually did it one of our club picnics one time. I, I did not enjoy it. Uh, but uh, there is one primary trick to it, which is that you have to go through everything and save it. And you have to exit the menu. And then you have to go back into the menu uh, and save it again with the transmit frequency. Um, so that it's uh, it, it's not fully intuitive. There is actually a place in the menu where it says what the offset is, and it completely ignores it. So it, it doesn't doesn't help you out there much at all. Um, so let's look at the easy way to do it. Uh, the easy way to do it is to use software. Over on the right here, I've got sort of a list of some of the radios because this list goes down multiple pages that are supported by the, the CHIRP program. And one of the things I will note is that this list is helpful because there are also some radios for which CHIRP does not have a listing, but this listing will tell you what other radio will work with it. So for instance, if you're doing a, a BF E500S, it says, well, the UV5R settings will work, will work just fine. And so uh, uh, for a lot of the BF uh, radios in, in Baofeng, that, that tends to be the case. The U, UV ones tend to be pretty much their, their same thing. The um, software, 
you can get it for Mac as long as it's a, a Intel Mac. You can get it for Linux and you can get it for uh, for Windows. Now, obviously, it isn't enough just plain to have your computer and then have your radio. You also need to have your uh, some sort of a cable to connect the, the two. There's lots and lots of options out there. They're typically not terribly expensive. I will note that if you see something that's super, super inexpensive, uh, read through the uh, reviews because one of the issues is that uh, the prolific brand chips, uh, several years ago, people started making knockoff chips and Prolific then responded by making their drivers check to see if they're knockoff chips. And if they are knockoff chips, the drivers won't support them. Uh, they, just, they just won't work. Now you can get around it by installing an older driver, but that's usually a bit of a pain to do. So the, the best thing to do is to get one that you know, already has the uh, appropriate uh, uh, driver associated with it. The, um, here's just sort of an, an example, look at some of the chips that are, or some of the, the cables that are out there. This is Amazon highly rates them. That's not my highly, highly rated. But anyway, you can see they're not terribly expensive. And these are the ones that would go with your typical Baofeng, Baofeng radio. I'll just show up in the mail. Uh, but not all of them are going to be this way. Uh, you can't, this is one that actually hooks up to a waterproof radio that, uh, that they make. There's also, uh, there are also kits that are, come with multiple adapters. This is, a, this is a kit that's I think about 25 bucks. And what it's got is Motorola ones. It's got Yezu and Icom ones. It's got Kenwood and Baofeng ones. And it's got uh, HYT ones. Um, and all of them go to an, a USB plug that just plugs into your laptop. Now, the big question is, once you plugged it in, then, well, what does that, where is it going to show up? So the best thing to do if you're on Windows is to fire up the device manager before you plug in your, uh, your adapter, plug the adapter in, and then somewhere in ports, com, and LPT, a new adapter will show up and it will list for you what serial port to use. So I know that for, for this particular one, I'm going to use, uh, use COM4 on that particular uh, computer. Um, now, when you first open up Chirp, uh, Chirp doesn't sort of start off showing you a whole lot. It's got file, edit, view, radio, help, and then a huge blank space. So the first step is going to be to make a copy of all of the channels that you already have on your HT or on your FM radio into Chirp. So to do that, I go to the radio pull down. I hit download from radio and then it then uh, pops up with this uh, thing telling, asking me, well, what COM port am I going to use? That will be the COM port that is on your device manager. Who's the vendor of the radio? Is it a Radio Oddity radio? Is it a Baofeng? Is it a Kenwood? Is it a Yezu? Is it an ICOM? Who, who's the manufacturer? And then once you pick the manufacturer, it will list which radios are available uh, by, from that manufacturer that Chirp knows about. Now, don't panic if you don't see your radio on this list. What you should do is go to the Chirp website and look to see if there's an equivalent one that they've identified for you. Just because uh, something isn't on this list doesn't mean that it can't work. Like, for instance, this uh, UV5RX3 uh, works for a lot of the uh, uh, tri-band radios. So once you've done that, then it's going to pop up with a set of instructions that basically say, turn the radio off, okay? Connect the, connect the, the microphone speaker cable. And the reason to do that is that some of the radios actually transmit if you plug that cable in while it's turned on. 
turn it on and turn the volume sort of way up. It needs to it needs to be high enough that the that it it's going to hear it. Uh, it's a good idea to be on a channel that nobody's talking on because if you pick up people talking at the same time you're trying to send data across the line, that's only going to confuse things. <laughs> uh, and then click OK. And once we click OK, a little window pops up that says cloning and lists, lists the progress. Now, after we've done that, our chirp is no longer a blank page anymore. Now it's got all sorts of information. This is the information that uh, AJ uh, programmed into this radio uh, uh, when I wanted at a club uh, uh, um, meeting there. Uh, it's, and we'll talk about sort of what, sort of what information is here and how it's organized. But it's not a bad idea once you have downloaded it to just go up to file and do save and make a copy of this so that if something goes wrong, you can go back to back to where you were before. So let's take a little closer look at the at the pieces on the at the columns on our spreadsheet here. Uh, first, we'll look at the ones over on the left here. So what we've got is a is a, a location, a channel number. So the on a, on a Baofeng radio, they typically have 127 different channels that you can program. And so the first one is going to be channel zero, and then channel one, and so forth. Our receive frequency, just type it in. We can give it. We can call it whatever name we'd like to do. Uh, AJ likes to use uh, the organization that runs the repeater plus the last three digits of the of the uh, frequency. Then we have to decide about what sort of tone mode we'd like to have, and that basically refers to the privacy tones. The privacy tones, the CTSS tones, basically uh, make it so that the repeater will not retransmit a signal that doesn't have the tone on it. This basically means that if uh, there's some source of static right next to the repeater, you're not constantly going to rep be repeating that static out over the airwaves. It's expecting to have that tone. Uh, you can also use tone squelch. This not only uses the tone when you transmit, but it also means that unless the repeater sends a tone, your radio won't start uh, start making noise. It'll remain quiet. This is useful on some of the uh, fusion repeaters because uh, the digital traffic can sound pretty horrible. And uh, if you have tone squelch turned on, it will not. Uh, the digital traffic will not uh, will not break your squelch. You you just won't hear it. Uh, but you have your have your choices on that. Both tone and tone squelch work fine for all of the AARC repeaters and that sort of thing. And then the final thing in this part is the tone frequency. And there's basically a pull down list on all of these uh, on on this, and you just select the one that matches what was in our example, which is 151.4. All the ARC repeaters have that. Let's look at the at the other side of the of the table there. And that is the part that controls whether or not what's our offset. Is it a plus offset or is it a minus offset? Do we add 600 uh, kilohertz to the, uh, to the frequency or do we subtract it? In this, these cases here, we're going to subtract it. Um, Generally speaking, for the UHF, it tends to be positive. So that's why when we have a UHF channel, that's using a five megahertz shift instead of a 0.6 megahertz shift, those are almost always going to, going to be positive. But always just pay attention to what the, the source that you're using for the repeater, and it will tell you what the duplex is. You don't have to guess this, it's, it's, it's there for you. Uh, and then also there's the option of, uh, I, I'll skip over sort of mode and power, I'll talk about mode a little bit later. And generally speaking for HTs, you want high power. Uh, if you put an S in this column, then if you tell the radio to scan, it will, will bypass that channel. It, it won't scan it, it'll just, just skip past it. Now there's also a lot of uh, other columns in here that relate to DTCS, uh, uh, crossband mode, 
all sorts of specialized things, but I'm not going to talk about those because these are the things that you mostly need to have that were covered in those last two slides. Uh, so here's an example of, uh, uh, of a, a, a more extensive chirp output showing here we've got a simplex frequency, or excuse me, not a simplex frequency because there's a minus out there, that's an offset. But that's one that doesn't use any tone. That repeater's wide open. You, you don't need any tone to use it. Uh, the, uh, the Elliott repeater is using a tone, but not tone squelch. So we use the tone column to put the correct tone in there, and we put the tone squelched column here. You can also put both of them, but truth be told, putting something just in the tone squelch column is the same as putting it both in the tone column and the tone squelch column. And then down at the bottom here, we've got one that where the, the duplex, where the, the uh, direction of the offset is none. And that's, of course, a simplex uh, a frequency there. So, and then, the, and then finally, if you want to, you can set it to be narrowband FM instead of just FM. Narrowband FM allows you to space frequencies a little bit closer together. And AJ used that for all of the, the uh, 1.25 uh, uh, meter uh, 220 uh, repeaters that he programmed in for it there. The, uh, now, when you save a file in Chirp, it's going to write an IMG file. And IMG files are great. If you ever need to load something right back into the radio that you got it from, like you, you want to change the programming back to the way it was before you went on a trip or something like that, you just pull up the IMG file and read it in. But they only work on a particular, on the same type of radio that they created with. You can't take an image from a Kenwood and read it into a Baofeng or a Baofeng to a Kenwood or whatever. However, Chirp can also export and import comma separated value files. These are something that you can re pull up right in your spreadsheet program and, uh, and, and work with it. So the way you would do an import is I would go over to my file mem men menu. I tell it I wanted to import. I've got a CSV file that has the list of uh, frequencies that we used for the, the Rockridge gravel grinder event uh, the other week. And then it comes up and it said, okay, it's got uh, Elliot, Bear Den, Rocky, et cetera. Now, the thing is that it's listing what channel number it's going to put in. Well, I didn't want it to overwrite the existing channel numbers. I didn't want to overwrite what AJ had put in for number one, two, three, four, et cetera. So what I did is they have these adjust new location buttons. And so I hit plus 100, and all of a sudden this was 101. Then I hit the t plus 10 button, and then it was 111. And then I hit the hit the 10 button again, and it was uh, uh, 121. And then I hit the minus one button to set it to be 120. So now those are going into the place in my radio that I want them to go. And uh, you just just can. There's no limit to how long you can keep doing that. If you want to, you can hit auto. It'll try to figure out good places for it. And also, you can decide if you if you didn't want to include one of these frequencies, you could just uncheck it. So, uh, so this is what they look like after I've done the import. They're now in my radio, and I can then down. Uh, yeah, well, excuse me. At this point, they're on my screen. They're in my computer. They're not yet back in my radio. So what I would do then is go over to the radio button and say upload to radio. And again, it's I'm just going to use the same settings I did before. I hit OK. I follow their instructions. I hit OK, and it does does cloning. So let me uh, before we do questions here, let's let's actually do one for real here. Okay, so I've got my uh, Baofeng radio here. I've got my adapter for it. I'm going to go to radio. I'm going to say download from radio. 
And in this case here, this is a ray, this is one of the bow fangs that actually uses one of the substitute drivers. So it uses a, 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 a radio oddity one. But anyway, so now I've got my radio plugged in. I've hooked my cable up, I've turned it on. I'm tuned to a frequency that uh, that I'm not going to be interfering with, that, excuse me, I'm not going to get, be getting a lot of traffic on. John, you can also disconnect the antenna. Right, no, that that, that, that will be. also work. It, I'm following the instructions there. I hit OK, and then it's off off cloning. Takes it maybe uh, 15, 20 seconds to, to copy everything over. Now, as I was uh, was doing this, I, I learned an interesting uh, an interesting thing there. Anybody uh, interested in having a uh, so, something for a particular place in in Virginia? Because one of the options is you can go up here to radio, and it says import from data source. And I could go over here to repeater book, and tell it what state I would like, and uh, and so let's see what they have for uh, for Richmond City on two meters, hit okay. Okay, no channels found, that's not, <laughs> that's not a good one. Let's try, uh, try another one here. Uh, let's see, what, uh, let's try Chesterfield County and see there. Okay, and it says that it knows three repeaters there. Well, right now, if I hit hit OK here, it would then substitute them for my top three. So I want to offset those. I know that in this radio, I don't have anything above 57. So I'll just kick it up to 101 through 104. That's the frequencies they're going to save it to. I hit OK. And now if we scroll down here, in our list of frequencies down to 102 to 104, it's got all the information already put in for us. And then to save it to my radio, I just hit upload to radio. Again, that information stays the same. I've got it already turned on and stuff. And now it's doing the cloning again and it's sticking it into the radio. So there's nothing, uh, there's not a lot that can go wrong with it in terms of, of doing this. You just need to pay attention to whether or not the, the offset is plus or minus and, and that you're using the, uh, uh, the appropriate offset uh, uh, frequency for the band you're using and that you know what the, what the tone should be. John, um, you can actually select and delete all the blank channels Yes, there's actually one of the options is I've got show empty clicked up there. If I turn right. off show empty, then it only shows me the channels that have stuff in it. So, so, uh, so it, it jumps up there to, to 101. Excuse me, they had channels through 72 there. But the, that's uh, um, using the uh, chirp in order to, to program radio. So with that, I really will go to uh, questions there. And I'll turn off the slide. John, I've, I've also used Chirp successfully for my home, you know, my transceivers, my 50 waters, because some of them are getting complicated to program. Right, yes, no, they, yeah, Chirp, I've used, used it also on my mobile units. Um, you can get uh, all sorts of other cables uh, that will also hook up. Some of my units use uh, uh, the old serial nine pin Ds. I've got some radios that, uh, that actually use the, the six pin uh, DIN connectors. But again, it, just as long as you have the right adapter, all of that's taken care of there. You don't need to worry about it when you get into Chirp. Chirp works the same way for everything. And the other thing is also, you can always ask a, a buddy that if they've got a good, uh, a good uh, spreadsheet that's got the, 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 the uh, frequencies in it that you might like to have. Uh, Michael? Uh, I do recognize the national calling frequencies, but you listed a couple of others. What are they? Oh, those are just, uh, those are other simplex frequencies that are, are 
frequently used in this area for for different purposes. One of them was the the frequency that we tend to use with uh, with Aries, um, the 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 five five one four six dot five five. Uh, incidentally, one of the things that's actually on the list there of uh, if you uh, tell it tell chirp to uh, import from a data source, or, or excuse me, they also have stock configurations, and that and one of the stock configurations is all the U.S. calling frequencies. You could also use them to program the radio if you want to use it for GMRS or, or FRS or MERS or something like that. Those frequencies are also built into, into CHIRP for non-HAM use. John, um, last year, AJ, Bill Phillips, Luke, and myself kind of collaborated, and we came up with an Excel spreadsheet that I'd be glad to share that kind of handles all of Central Virginia some of the more popular repeaters in the Washington DC, Northern Virginia area, as well as Richmond. Yeah. And it's, we still, and that was still under 80 channels used. Yeah. Well under. Yeah, I tend to, to, if I'm going on a trip, what I'll do is come up with a list of the frequencies that I might need on that trip, throw them in a spreadsheet, read the spreadsheet into, into Chirp, save it, go have my vacation, come back and reload everything like it was before I put those in. And then I'm ready for the, the next round. Uh, so you don't we just all, sort of accumulate stations you won't use. <laughs> and obviously as a retired National Weather Service employee, I always recommend people put in the two or three NOAA weather radio frequencies. Yeah. Uh, Ed, will you send that uh, spreadsheet um, yes. Thank you. Yep, and we we can we should be able to post it on the website too. Sure. And I don't take it was a collaborative effort. Three or four or five of us did it and had fun. And someone even added railroad. You know, say you want or interested in monitoring the local Amtrak train. Someone added that in at one point. Sounds like Wilson. Yeah, and there and there are options where you can make it. I I'm trying to remember the details on it, but I think that if you put a P in the skip column, or excuse me, there there there's something that you can do that will make it so that it will not allow you to transmit. That that's one thing I should show you on chirp uh, quickly here. I'll I'll go back to screen sharing for a second. Uh, is one of the things that's also about chirp that makes things relatively easy is that everything's a pull down. So if I go to uh, the, the duplex here, here are my options. I can do minus, plus, split, and off. And off is what you wanna have if you've got it set on the, uh, for one of the weather frequencies, because you don't want the radio to transmit on that frequency. You want it only to receive. So hitting off will make it so that uh, so that it will not transmit on that frequency. John, I don't think the Baofengs will permit you to transmit outside the handband. Yeah, I guess, yeah. No, they're they're they are smart about some things, but they are not smart about as many things as you might like because Baofengs are used for a lot of things other than ham radio. Okay. But another trick, John, that you might do it right now, you could select a particular line on the spreadsheet, right click and do properties, and then you get a separate programming dialog box. Just for, it makes it a little bit easier. Right. So I'm, I, right, I right clicked on that, or for that matter, I could just click on it and go up here to properties. He, getting to properties either way does the same thing. And then it provides you, as you say, a nice little box where you can type in the, in the stuff. I say, in this case here, it does it is listing some DCS tones that you you don't need. Um, we don't. Uh, uh, that's another way of sort of doing the the uh, the privacy tones there. And it now one thing is that it's also listing some defaults here that didn't show up in the original screen there that aren't really going to sort of have any any effects on things because we chose the tone mode. If we had chose the DTCS mode, well then yes, all of the, all of these DTSS things would would matter. But those are getting into some of the sort of the fine points of it in terms of taking it and making it so your radio 
be it a, a handheld or be it a, a, a mobile unit is ready to do the things you need. You don't need to get super fancy in order to get, get uh, pretty good with this stuff. I'll stop the sharing there. Any other questions? Okay. Did I, did I do it in my half hour there, Ed? Yes. I want to emphasize when I first started doing my own programming with Chirp, I got really frustrated and I 